So today I plan erecting my first bit of timeless fence along my property. I've got those corners in. Now it's time to put a straight run in. It's about 300 meters today. So I'm using the bad boy of the timeless range, the two and an eighth, six and a half footage. So I've got me high tensile wire. I made up a custom jig to put them in the ground. I'll show you when I get out there. Got the gripples. So we'll head out and uh, start erecting. Come on puppies. G'day guys, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually out on the Outer Farm property this morning. So this is the section of fence we're gonna put up today. So it's from this New Zealand A-frame down yonder to that tree line there. So what I'll do now is I'm using, gonna use a string line. I'm gonna run a low, about a foot off the ground and one towards the top. Two lines to keep it square. There are multiple options you can use. You can run out a bit of your high tensile plane wire mid midway down and use that as a guide but i'm going to use a string line today so we'll run it out and we'll get stuck into it The next thing I'm going to do, because the string line is touching the front of the posts, where my T-posts are going to go, the last thing you want to be doing is resting it up against those lines to keep it square and going all the way through to the end. Because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be touching it, but ever so slightly, you're going to be pushing that line out. By the time you get to the very end, you could be up to three inches, four inches out, because you've pushed it a little bit every time to get your T-post up against it. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to use one of these T-posts. See, on the back of the two and an eighth, it's probably a quarter of an inch, maybe a touch more thick. So what I'm going to do today is run that in front of the string line. So it touches the back of the A-frame. So what I've done is I've just put the T-post in there. So as you can see, it's physically touching the back and the same down the bottom. And as you can see, if we come up and have a look at the thickness, that's quite substantial. So it's quarter of an inch, if not touch more. So now that allows that line, as you can see, it's off the front of that H-post now, quarter of an inch. So it's resting on the T-post, so all the way down, I know I've got that quarter of an inch clearance, so there's no reason to be resting those T-posts up against that line. In regards to the installation of these T-posts, Timeless recommend a spacing between post of 16 and a half foot. So if you're in Australia, that converts back to 5.02 meters. So I'm gonna round it up and go five meters. What you could do is run out a long builder's tape, a 30 meter tape, and use some paint, some marker paint, and put across every five meters. It saves you stopping and marking out on the ground every time. But me being me, I forgot to bring the marker paint and I also lost the builder's tape. So I've just got a standard eight meter tape. So I'm gonna to have to physically put a post in the ground and hook on and measure every post. Before we start the installation, I'll just go through this jig. So I made this jig up so I can put the posts in at 90 degrees to the ground by myself. Cause I'm doing it solo again today, Nick's at work. So what it is, it's just a bit of four by one and a half pine and I use it I got a metal 90 degree brace there, screwed that on. Then I used a bigger, same size timber and made a bigger brace across here. The locking mechanism to lock that T-post on, because I'm doing it on my own, I've got to have two free hands to run the petrol post tail rammer. I just used an Oki strap or bungee strap, we call them here in Australia. And that works fine. So it's got to be tight enough that when I actually lift it up, it doesn't come out because you don't you don't want the post coming away from that brace but it's also got to have enough giveness that when i use the petrol post hole rammer that it does push it allow it to push it out and as you can see there that's easily pushing out of the ground so it's got the support i want but it's also allow me 
to drive that post into the ground at the same time. I mentioned that the spacing distance recommendation from Timeless was 16 and a half foot or five meters. But it also says in their catalog that it's up to the client's discretion. If they want to go closer or if they want to go further apart, it's totally up to them. But their recommendation is 16 and a half foot or five meters. Enough of that, we'll uh, start ramming some of these posts in the ground. You've got to bear with me because this is the first time I've used this jig and tried it on my own. So uh, I think it's going to be a laugh for both of us. Sometimes you just got to revert back to old faithful. So that petrol post hole rammer wasn't pushing down hard enough or giving enough vibration to break through the surface of this harsh ground in Australia. It worked right up the top of the property where it's a bit more soft and giving, a bit more sandy loam. And it worked on the trial property where the soil was nice and lush. But they were on three quarter, one and three quarter inch post. Whereas this is two and an eighth and it's a bit thicker, heavier gauge. So it's going to be a long day for me. I'm going to use the old manual post hole rammer and ram them in and these ones the two and an eighth the seven footers six and a half footers i've cut them down to have to be driven in 24 inches so where my finger is is the depth they've driven in and all timeless posts have got a sticker on the back or a label so it says buried to top of label into the ground i'm going to keep cracking and whack on with a few more of these posts i've managed to put several in now the first two i done with the manual old school post hole rammer but it did take quite some hammering into the ground and yeah probably 10 or 15 minutes the ground is that rock hard so i've decided to use a combination i use the post hole borer on the tractor and i go down three quarters of the way in the last four to six inches i i bring in my jig with a post on it and i use the post hole rammer to go the rest of the way and that firmly sets it in the ground and then I just push the soil back in and back ram it. So we'll do one together and I'll show you how I go about it because this ground is rock hard. So that's the easiest method I found because my ground's so hard. If I had Mike McElroy here from Timeless, big bunts and brood ears, he could probably use the manual ram and get that all the way in, but I'm not as buff and as big as Mike, so I've had to use the tractor. So I'll continue on now and knock all these in.
there we have it that's the last of them done so I'll pack up now and I'll see you in the morning we'll come out and we'll run some wire now that we've got our t-post set let's start running some wire this is the fun bit of the job There we have it guys, all finished. Six strand high tensile galvanized wire, timeless, fully flexible, T-post to take any load. And when it comes to the termination point, I use gripples. So that's a gripple there. I just bought a box, or should I say a bucket of gripples, and they're GP medium sized gripples. And I use them for my termination points and just hand pulled it. And a little bit of chicken fry. Sexy fence, mate! Who was that guy? Well, he knows quality in class when he sees it. Righto, guys, on that note, have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys, and we'll catch you later.